So today I wanted to briefly discuss the arbitrage pricing theory or APT. Now I really like this graphic here, but I don't know what Bob's market has to do with the APT. And I really don't know what these bananas have to do with the APT. But what I do know is that APT is related to the cap M or the capital asset pricing model, but it isn't. I highly recommend that you watch my videos on cap M prior to watching this video. You can check out those videos if you follow these links right here. So again, it is related to cap M. Let's refresh our memory in terms of cap M. Now, the important thing to remember here is that there's this beta and that represents an exposure to the market. And that's kind of it. That's the only thing that matters. That is really it. But I don't think that's particularly realistic. I think you could think of a number of things that would impact uh, asset prices. So what the arbitrage pricing theory does is it attempts to improve the cap M. Now the cap M is really kind of a special case of the arbitrage pricing theory. Now in cap M, there's only one beta, but APT says, well, maybe there are more beta. So we can look at this formula and say, well, instead of that being the exposure, it's just an exposure to something that impacts asset prices. And there probably are other things. So we can add another exposure and another one. And we can just keep going until we have all the exposures that we think impact prices. And this gives us a more realistic model to price assets. Now, what are these factors? Well, they're they're going to be like microeconomic factors. Uh, they're they aren't specified in the theory, but we think well, maybe there's three to seven of these things that really impact prices. Now, keep in mind, I have some issues with the way we calculate inflation. I have some issues with GDP. You can check out videos on those topics here: inflation and here GDP. I think you'll find those of interest. Let's just do a quick example. Let's say we have an asset and we have some exposures out there. We have some factors out there. So let's say we have GDP growth. We we're saying it's expected return is 4% and our asset has a beta uh, versus it of 0.8. We've got inflation. We expect that to be 2.3. Our asset has a beta exposure of 0.6 to that. We think gold prices are going to go up by 3.5% and our asset has a negative 0.5 beta exp uh, exposure to gold prices. And we have you know the S&P 500. I think that's going to go up 7%. And our particular asset has a beta of 1.4 versus that asset. And of course, there's also that risk-free rate. So to calculate this, what we're going to do is say well, our expected return. So we're going to take that beta of the GDP growth we're going to take that risk premium, so our expected return for GDP growth minus the risk-free rate. We're going to get, you know, 2.4 percent. We do the same kind of thing for inflation, same kind of thing for gold prices, same kind of thing for the S&P 500 return, and then we add those things up together and we say, hey, based on this model, we expect our asset to return 10.33 percent. That's basically it. If you need to stop it and go through the math, go ahead and do that. But that's about it. Next time we'll talk about assumptions. Uh, because there are some assumptions that are different than CAPM that I think are important to highlight. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Brian Kozlowski. Thank you so much.